Do you know what I got right here? Do you know what this is? Well, let me tell you. This right here are about 20 volumes of a story that has yet to be animated. Yet to be animated. You know what we do now? We wait. That's what we do now. We're getting pretty good at it, because it's been eight years since the anime ended. So I think everybody should be pretty damn good with that by now. But here's the thing, all right? I'm sure most of you have seen the announcement. Um, I've seen the announcement. I tweeted about it. A lot of people talking about the announcement. It was really nice to wake up to the other day, right? When I woke up and I checked my phone and I was going through Facebook and I'm seeing everybody posting about the new Bleach news. And um, I was very happy because... Like, I always figured, like, if that was, if it was ever going to come back, this is the way, this is how it would go, alright? Because, look, it's, once again, it's been many years. I've gotten kind of used to every now and then, every once in a while on social media, you'll come across, like, a 2016 is the year of Bleach! 2017's the year of Bleach! 2018! This is the year it's coming back! And I'm like, ah, uh, no. Like, it's like, if this is ever going to actually happen, it's not just going to be some random person sharing a, an article on Facebook. It's going to be this. It's going to be me checking social media and, like, every... Because I follow a lot of anime dorks, because I'm an anime dork. So every, every two seconds, it's going to be like, check this out, check this out, bleach news, bleach news. So we're already on the right track here. Um, so on March 21st and 22nd, uh, in Japan, there's going to be a, a special presentation. There's going to be two main focuses of this presentation. The first focus is going to be on Taito Kubo's new work. Okay, we don't know what that is yet, but we'll wait and see. All right, he's, it's been almost four years since the end of Bleach, so he had some time off. He's done some other things in between. He's done... Um, some game design work on uh, the characters of that Sakura game. I remember he did that. I think that might have been the last thing I remember Kubo actually doing. Um, but hey, you know what? Bleach took up a lot of his time. Uh, I think it was he deserved a vacation, right? So he's going to get something else going. Oh, and uh, Burn the Witch, too. Burn the Witch is also going to be getting an OVA, so that's going to be something else connected. So yeah, he did game designs for that one game, and then he also did uh, Burn the Witch, which was back in like 2018. That already doesn't feel like that long ago, but it, I guess it was. It was like a year and a half, almost two years ago. The other focus of the presentation is going to be the Bleach 2020 20th year anniversary project. What is the 20th anniversary 2020 project? We also don't know that. Um, but I'm gonna say, like, this is the most official thing we've ever gotten. If it was gonna come back, this is the time for it to come back, right? And I'm honestly, I don't know if this is just my inner fanboy talking or I'm just getting really pumped, but personally, I feel like this is gonna be it. Now listen! That gives you really nothing more than just how I feel about this, but if you wanted to know, Teching, do you think this is it? Personally, my subjective opinion, yeah, I kind of feel like this is going to be it, alright? So, alright, but until then, we wait. We've waited eight years! We can wait another two months or so, less than two months. It's January 30th, I'm filming this right now. And the announcement will be coming March 21st and 22nd. Um, so we just hang tight for less than two months and we'll see where this goes. All right. Okay. Now, um, just by happen chance, I didn't know anything beforehand because I didn't read, I think this article, the announcement for the announcement that we don't know what the announcement is. That came out, I think, what was that, Monday or Tuesday? Um, I think Tuesday, two days ago. And I made the Quincy video last week, and I'm like, all right, we'll do a Quincy video and then do a, the, the uh, Von den Reich next week. And so I didn't plan that, but here we are, which is pretty convenient because the Von den Reich are the main enemies of the final arc, the Thousand Year Blood War arc of uh, Bleach, led by this sexy mustachioed man right here, Yuha. So, um, yeah, check it out. Uh, I'm going to go scatter these around. Give me a second.
Oh, oops. Uh, sorry, Grammy. There's no room for you. No, I just can't think of a single place to put you. Yeah, that sucks, don't it? All right. So today, everybody, we'll be talking about the other Quincy side of the coin, the Quincy powers that were revealed in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, uh, the Stern Return. Now, something to keep in mind here, we're not going to be going through every individual letter of like A, the Almighty, B, the Balance, C, the Compulsory, D, the Death Deal. Um, I would love to talk about Askin Aklevar again, and I very well might um, in another video, just an Askin video. But no, I already did an entire, like, three-part, hour-long extravaganza delving into every single individual Sternritter script, all right? And you could check that out up here. No, today we're going to be talking about some other abilities that the Quincy's um, displayed during the final arc of... of uh, Almost said One Piece, the final arc of Bleach. Uh, and let's start off with their uh, release forms, their holy form, the Voltstandig, or the Voltstandig. The original name for this that Uryu used in the Soul Society arc was the Quincy Let's Steal, the Quincy final form. In the final arc, it's the Quincy Voltstandig, and it's the equivalent of the Bankai, pretty much, to the point where you can go into your Voltstandig, and then you can go out of it. It's not like a one-and-done, burn out all of your Riatsu, lose your Quincy powers afterwards, okay? Not really all that practical in an actual battle after battle after battle. So what Yuha did is I guess he developed this new form of the Let's Steal, the Quincy final form or the Quincy holy form, the Volt Standing, okay? So this allows you to remove the Sonare glove or some other kind of restraint on you. Sometimes it's a metal, sometimes like Maste Masculine, he had like a wrestler belt. So whenever you take that off or you pull off the glove, you go into your Volt Standing form. And in this form, you have an increase of your base stats. You're a lot faster. You can heal and all that stuff, and you get an increase to whatever script that um, His Majesty Yuha gave you, okay? Now, the Volt Standing changes in terms of aesthetic for every Quincy, and I don't just mean like, oh, obviously they all transform into different forms given what their script was. No, it's just like, the amount that they change is different. So, for example, like, uh, where's Kurhei at? Okay, Kurhei was the first person we got to see use a Volt Standing. He was basically just, like, the guinea pig, the test subject, so at the very beginning of this arc, we got to see See what a proper stern ritter could actually do okay so that's setting like oh all the stuff he can do we're gonna see later on in the arc <laughs> Right? Yeah, yeah, kind of, sort of. Some of it we did, right? So Kurhe was uh, Sternritter J, the Jail, and he was the one that got sent to Hueco Mundo. That was the first Sternritter proper that Ichigo had to fight, okay? And so he goes into his holy form, and it looks like this. All right, so it's... It, it's not the best design from my perspective. You know, it looks a little lopsided and weird and avant-garde, but, you know, it's clearly a transformation. He's got the weird thing over his eye. He's got the weird wings and the boots. I, I don't know. What the, what are the point of the pointed boots? I don't get it. But anyway, yeah, he transforms into this. All right, I'm like, all right, that's, that's cool. That's awesome. Um, but we get other Quincy's that when they go into their final form, their holy forms, they don't really look all that extravagant. A, a couple of them do, like Asnotes. Asnotes becomes, like, perfect like nightmare fuel he's like got the stitches coming out of him and he like rips it open he's like there's like a tentacle monster comes out of him that looks horrifying but then we get like the stern ritter clique you know like uh Giselle and meninas and candace and latato um you, you know we get um um uh robert accutron stern ritter n which we never found out what the n stood for um but you know we get those ones and even basby basby was a very prominent stern ritter in this arc his relationship with hashwalt we had like a whole flat flashback centered around that but their holy forms basically just come down to wings and a halo and then that's it uh you know now, now depending on their sternritter script and their uh, abilities their wings will take a different shape like meninas mcallen for example well she was the power but she also had like that heart aesthetic around her and so her wings took the form of like interlocking hearts candace's was the thunderbolt so her wings took the form of like lightning bolts you know the shape of a lightning bolt um giselle's because she was the zombie girl uh her wings took the form of like skeletal wings okay uh basby's were just kind of like just like 
rods sticking out of his back. They weren't even really wings. They were just kind of lines that were sticking out of his back. And then they all get a halo, and then that's it, right? Um, so I was always curious about that. How come some Volt Standings, how come some holy forms have these really elaborate um, changes to their entire body, like Asnotes or Kerhays, but then you get some of them, like Basbies, were just like, oh no, halo and some wings, and that's it. Um, you could say it's like, oh, well, maybe some Quincy's had the power for longer, so they trained with it for longer, but that can't be true because Basby was one, I mean, he was around hundreds of years ago when the Stern Ritter were first formed, okay, so that can't be it. Um, later on, we find out that Yuha has the power of uh, power redistribution. He has the power of the Almighty, Aswalan, so the Holy Selection. So he can literally take the power from the lesser Quincy's and move them to the greater Quincy's, like his elite guard, uh, like Lilia and Gerard and Pernida and my boy, Askinak Levar. So he does that later on when the um, the elite guard are getting their asses kicked by the uh, Squad Zero. He uses Aswalan to take the powers from the uh, lesser Quincy and give them to the greater Quincy. Now, when he does this, he does not take away their innate abilities. Um, I don't believe they can go into their holy form anymore, but Basby still has the script of H, the heat. So he could still use his fire powers. He could still use, you know, burner finger one, burner finger two. You know, he could still all do all that. Um, he just can't go into his holy form anymore, okay? So I can understand that when he takes the power away from them, gives it to like the elite Stern Ritter guard, and then they can go into their proper volt standings and they look like this. Like Gerard's is very elaborate. Lilia's very elaborate. Lilia's basically transforms his entire body. Um, later on, he goes through another transformation where he's basically like an owl human thing, you know? Um, Pernida, okay. Well, honestly, Pernida and Gerard had their powers innate. So, Yuha did not give them a script until after, okay? So, basically what I think they did, like, Gerard always had that power of the miracle. It just wasn't called the miracle until Yuha called it M, the miracle, right? But he always had that innate power. Same thing with Pernida, because it was talked about how Pernida was the left hand of the Soul King, and Gerard was the heart of the Soul King, right? Um, but then the case with Askin, his, his release form also very elaborate, changes his whole design around, gives him a visor and some wings, uh, very elaborate elaborate there. So I'm guessing well before Yuha arrived at the Soul Palace, well before he used that Aswalan to redistribute the power, the one that we got to saw in the series, like when he was fighting Ichibe, um, you know, like in this volume right here. Uh, well before that, Yuha kind of sitting on his throne, he decided which Quincy's deserve a higher level holy form and which ones do not. So he was probably looking at his subjects and he's like, all right, Asnot's power, the fear and his personality, he's very loyal. Uh, we'll give him a higher tiered holy form. Uh, Kurhei has the jail and that's a really powerful ability. And also keep in mind, Kurhei, I think you all wanted to send Kurhei to kind of test Ichigo and see how strong he was. So that's why he gave him a higher level one. Um, Bambietta kind of had one. Yeah, Bambi's was kind of more elaborate. She basically, like her arms became her wings. She kind of turned into like this, you know, flying Valkyrie sort of character. So yeah, that's fair. But for a lot of the other Sternritter, like he was looking at like Giselle. And he's like, Giselle or Meninas and Candace. Yeah, they don't need a higher tiered level, you know, release. They could just have the wings and like they get the basic package pretty much, right? Uh, but if Yuha wanted to with his ability, of Aswal and his holy selection, yeah, he could have easily taken the powers from other Quincy's and thrown them all into Candace. And Candace would have had, like, you know, lightning deity god mode Candace, okay? She could have, he could have done that to her if they wanted to, but they decided not to because it's like, yeah, it's not important, right? So that's the deal with the Volt Standing. It's something that's like redistributed power that you have to kind of move around, right? So that's how that goes. Um, but yeah, while in the Volt Standing, they also have an ability called Slavere, Slavery, which um, is an ability that's ridiculously overpowered and was only used a single time in the entire last arc, okay? Remember that? So... Kurhei goes into his final form, and he's in Hueco Mundo, and then the Trace Bestias show up, Hari Bells, Fraxiones, they create Ion. Ion is this giant hulking, like, basically, yeah, like, the Incredible Hulk Chimera creature that's like, boom, boom, and just starts beating the ever-loving shit out of Kurhei, right? And he's being pounded into the ground, and if it wasn't for the Blute Venom, the defensive aspect of the Quincy's, we'll get to that next, you know, Kurhei would have died. Kurhei gets up, and his neck is broken, and he's like, okay, this is 
is annoying. Crack. It's time for me to, to one-up this creature, this, this, this mindless beast. So he activates Sclavare, which his halo begins to, like, shimmer. And then the Quincy's innate ability, as we touched upon last time, is the ability to draw in Reishi and make spirit weapons out of it. Okay, Sclavare, while in your holy form, takes it to the final level, takes it to the ultimate level, where you're not just drawing in the reishi and making weapons out of it. No, you're literally enslaving it, hence the name. So, you can literally break apart any spiritual body, and that could be anything from the ground in Huecamundo, because everything in Huecamundo is spiritually based, like the ground, the sand, the trees. He can break that apart and make it part of himself, or he can literally tear asunder an actual living spiritual being. So Ion is such an instance of that. So he literally tears Ion apart at like the atomic level, like with the spiritons, breaks it apart, and then forces that into himself, and he creates this monstrosity, all right? Ion fused with Kurhe. Now, this form does not last permanently. Um, the power begins to, like, dissipate, or maybe, like, the reishi that he ripped out of Ion eventually melds with his own reishi, so this, like, monstrous appearance does begin to diminish the longer he activates it, alright? And Kurhe states he doesn't like to use the power because he views, like, Ion as, like, a dirty, kind of hollow creature, so he's like, I don't want that to be part of me, but he breaks it down at the, at the um, atomic level, so to speak. Also, considering that hollows are, like, toxic to Quincy's that are like poisoning to Quincy's um, maybe you can get around this using Sclavare because you're not taking the hollow powers you're like breaking it down on a fundamental level and just absorbing the raw components of that also Ion like he's hollow but it's like he's created from these other hollows so it's like we're not really sure exactly what kind of classification Ion is right we don't really know but no even beyond that um, he was able to like win um uh, Sun Sun was uh, using that protective barrier, like that camouflage barrier to hide everybody. Kurhe just ripped that apart and just absorbed that. We also, because Orihime and Chad and everybody, they went into Wake Mundo, they went through that spirit particle conversion process. They were made out of spiritual power too. They were made of Reishi. So Ion started to absorb that from them and you got to see like, like, like Orihime's arm like rip apart. Like, holy crap! Like he's literally tearing their bodies asunder with that power, okay? Ridiculously powerful ability um and it's just not used after that after that fight like i i don't know what to tell you like all, all these stern ritter like like basby doesn't use it askin doesn't use it freaking giselle um who else do we got back here you know uh asno doesn't use it the Aswalan is like something different. The Aswalan is not like ripping apart beings at the molecular level. The Aswalan is like taking the innate power that they have and redistributing it to other beings. That's what the Aswalan is. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if Kubo is just like, hey, this is a really powerful ability. Because if like the Sternritter all went into the Soul Society activated their holy forms, and then immediately started using Sclavare to just, they would like literally tear apart the entirety of the Seirete. And every Shinigami that was there would just literally get ripped apart in just this vortex, you know, um, without prejudice. So I, maybe that's the reason Oda Kubo was just, mm. Kubo was just like, yeah, it's just too ridiculously powerful. I'm not going to use this again, but it was an interesting power. Right? Um, you might be able to say they're not able to... Well, they're not able to go into their Volt Standing when they steal a Bonkai. But even the Bonkai stealing aspect of this arc didn't really last long. I mean, it honestly didn't. Like, it was at the very beginning of the arc when they could steal Bonkai, and that was, like, a really scary thing. And four captains got their Bonkai stolen. Toshiro, Soifone, Komamura, and Byakuya. But, uh, after that... Um, you know, that doesn't really get touched upon after Urahara. Urahara figures out a way to fix it, and then boom, it's solved. Um, Yama's Bankai was taken by Yuha, but that never really gets touched based again either. So, yeah, that, that's the thing there with Sclavare, though. All right, so let's talk, let's move on to Blute, all right? So there's two different kinds of Blute. Actually, there's three, but the last one can only be used by Yuha, apparently, because he's Yuha and he's awesome. So we got Blute Artery and then Blute Vena. 
Blut Vina is the one that we see like 99% of the time in Bleach, all right? It's a technique, it's a defensive technique where you put the uh, Reishi into your, into your veins, hence the name, and then you can use it to block certain attacks, okay? So even an attack that would be really ridiculously powerful, even like a Shinigami's Bankai, like Ichigo going to slash you with Tensa Zangetsu, if you're proficient enough with Blut Vina, you can block the attack, okay? So that's the defensive maneuver. Then you have Blut Artery, which is the offensive maneuver, which which, once again, I think was only used by Kurhei in this story. Because um, Blute Artery, we don't really get to touch on that too much. Blute is, uh, Vina is used all the time. Like, Masaki used it. Ichigo used it. Yuha used it. Uh, a slew of Quincy's used it. Um, but when it came to the Artery one, I mean, maybe it's just not as apparent. Because whenever they go into Blute Vina, like, we get to see, like, the markings on their flesh become very apparent. Because it's literally like they're supercharging their veins, right? Um, so we get to see that more obviously. So maybe they were using Artery, it's just they were, na they were not naming the attack every time they used it. They just did it as second nature. Uh, because Artery is the offensive one. The way that Kurhei explained this was he's like, when he was fighting Ichigo and he was getting the ass you know, crap beat out of him by Ichigo, Ichigo, um, he was like, all right, I can't attack Ichigo and hope to hurt him without using artery, because that's the only technique I have that'll make me strong enough to actually damage Ichigo Kurosaki in his Bankai, but unless I use Blut Vina to guard myself, I'm just gonna get wrecked, I'm just gonna get sliced in half by his power, and you can't use both at the same time. That's the rub. That's the drawback. It's like a click switch. You have to be like, all right, click the switch on artery or click the switch on vena. Can't use both. So at the same time. So that was the problem that, you know, Kurhei had where he's like, all right, I have to go into artery to attack and then immediately go into vena to block. And it's like he, Ichigo was kind of keeping him on the ropes when he was doing that, right? So yeah, that, that was the offensive and defensive boosters that they got. Ichigo learns how to use it subconsciously first uh, when Yuha takes the blade and goes to ram it right in Ichigo's neck and Ichigo blocks it with Blute um, subconsciously. Later on... Um, after he learns the truth about him and the truth about his mom and everything, uh, apparently he would be able to use it. But remember, Ichigo learned how to, you know, fight from the Soul Palace. He learned about his, you know, his true Zanpakuto, you know, his Zangetsu. He got the dual-bladed ones. And he learned about all that stuff at the Soul Palace from Shinigami, not Quincy's. So it wasn't like a Quincy was teaching Ichigo how to use Blut. Um, and so we don't really get to see him use it all that much throughout the rest of the arc. Um, that's just how it goes, right? I mean, he didn't have a master to teach him how to activate it at will and all the things you could do with it, so it makes sense, right? Uh, why he wouldn't just know how to use it all of a sudden, right? He trained with Shinigami in the Soul Palace to learn Shinigami techniques, not Quincy techniques, right? So that's, that's Blute. The third variety is Blute Vina Anahaben, which was used by Yuha against Ichibei. And so that is extending Blute Vena outside of your body, extending the veins on the ground to make like a force field around you to like force it out. And when Ichibei went to go hit him, like he was forcing his veins into Ichibei's arm to like take him over, but Ichibei was able to like break through that. And he was able to use that like hidden Hado, the giant dragon wind burst thing to break through the barrier. So it's not an indestructible kind of thing, but it's just kind of like Yuha's personal like Vena. Like he's the king, he's the Christ figure of all the Quincy's, so he would obviously have a stronger technique, right? Um, we talked about Aswollen already. It's the holy selection. Only Yuha was capable of doing that uh, because he's the god of, he's the father of all Quincy's. He can do with their powers as he wills because, you know, they all descend from him. He can do whatever he wants. Uh, we even saw that with Ichigo. Ichigo, he made Ichigo stab the Soul King because he was like taking over his blood. So, yeah. Um, there's certain Quincy spells, but they are not really touched upon at all. Uh, we touched upon the certain techniques with the Ginto last time, like the Sprenger technique and all of that, and the, the Heisen and the Greets and all those techniques that Uryu was using with the Ginto. But going beyond that, there's actual Quincy spells, like things that are basically the equivalent of Keto. Um, the only people that were shown to use this were Yuha and then Royd Lloyd. When Royd Lloyd copied Yuha and he got all of his memories and everything, he was also able to use these techniques. So I don't know if Royd would have been able to, or any Quincy would have been able to do these, because we don't really see, we don't really see Basby busting out these Quincy spells, okay? Or any other Quincy for that matter. It's just Yuha himself and then Royd whenever he was transformed into Yuha, okay? So the first of these spells is uh, Krinkenlead, and it's, uh, it's, it's uh, Saint Zwicklinger. 
Saint, Saint, Sequit, this thing. Um... I should have asked, I, I had a lot of offers. There were a lot of people that lived in Germany, like, hey, Teching, we can help you out with these words. And I'm like, all right, I was thinking about it. And I was like, you know what? You know what? I think it would just be funnier if I did it this way. Did you laugh? St. Zkrikshinger, Kreken lead. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> um, it's. I hope it's funny. Anyway, this was the technique. It was like the ultimate defensive technique that Quincy's have in their arsenal like, like the ultimate apex of Quincy spells okay of defense and Royd used this as disguised by Yuha when he was fighting against Yamamoto to protect himself it creates this giant cathedral made of a, of a huge Quincy cross behind him and apparently the way that Royd described this was like if anyone if any enemy steps foot in this holy sanctified uh, place this protected barrier they'll just be rent asunder by the holy might of the Quincy's and but Yamamoto's just like screw that shit takes one step in and just boom just shatters it apart because he's Yama and also it wasn't actually Yuha that was using the spell if Yuha himself used the spell it might have had a little bit more stopping power all right but yeah so that's like the ultimate defensive spell we also only get to see a single time and then later on when Yuha was fighting against Ichibe Ichibe used um his Zanpakuto uh Ichimonji to remove like half of his power like he attacked his hand and then he sliced his whole arm like he painted his whole body in half so Ichibe's like, I've reduced your entire power by half now. How does it feel, Quincy, to be defeated by me, the head of the Shinigami, with only half of the effort? I could defeat you with one hand tied behind my back, basically. And Yuha was like, oh, does this look like I'm being beaten down? And then he activates it. And whenever they activate the Quincy spells, these little strips of, like, Roman numerals appear whenever they're activating it. So Yuha activates uh, Sanct Altar which creates a giant altar, which allows him, because he's the god of all Quincy's, he controls what kind of power all the Quincy's have. So even if his power is reduced by half, he can just summon the Sanct Altar, and then BOOM! All my power's back again, because I'm the Quincy god. I can do whatever I want, right? If I lose power, I can just regain it again. If you take away my voice, I can just give myself the voice. That's how it works. Um, that's not broken at all, right? Yeah, okay, so that's Sanct Altar. We got to see that one from Yuha. Um, but yeah, beyond that, we don't really get to see the full scope of all these Quincy spells, you know, there was an ultimate offensive, I mean, there was an ultimate defensive spell, so there's probably a bunch more defensive spells, and there's more offensive spells, kind of like Bakudo and Kido, Bakudo are more supplemental spells, Hado are offensive spells, um, and there was a lot more to that, like with the Sankt Altar shit, but we just they never got to see more of that there, um, but yeah, so that's that's pretty much all of the Quincy techniques that we get in the final arc. We got Volt Standing, the Holy Form. We got Blute Vena, Blute on uh, Artery. We got the spells like Creek and Lead. We got the Aswollen, and we got the, the, the which is the Holy Selection, and that's pretty much it. Now each individual Stern Ritter also has a spirit weapon that they create. Um, this is more than just bows, although still a lot of them are privy to bows or at least you know projectile weapons. Uh, but there are some that prefer melee weapons, like Kurhe hey just has a sword. Uh, Bambietta uses like a scimitar. Uh, King Du, Stern Ritter Eye, the Iron. He uses like Wolverine claws sort of deals. Uh, Basby uses a crossbow. Uh, BG9, which we also didn't find out the K, utilizes a minigun. Robert Akutron uses pistols. Uh, we had Sternritter X, the X-axis. Lilia Barrow, he had his diagram gun, which was pretty damn cool, right? And that thing got sliced in half by Shunsui, and then he just repaired it. So that was cool, but right, yeah. But once again, a lot of the other Quincy's just make spirit bows. Uh, they're, they're, uh, highly files, they're holy bows and holy arrows, and those things take the shape of whatever they're into so for example once again like candace's is a lightning bolt just cells are you know bones um latato is shaped like uh like fangs you know because she's the gluttony um and mininess are hearts because the hearts really have nothing to do with her power she is the power she's just a super buff she's like a like a like a scrawny little girl but she can pick up like a giant building and she can you know get super ripped whenever she wants i don't know where that comes back to hearts other other than her just being best girl of course you know oh but uh yeah she can make you know she can make bows with made out of hearts and stuff um oh there's also pepe pepe wakabrata but uh i uh removed all traces of that guy from my memory so we're never gonna talk about him again <laughs> almost i almost remembered something i shouldn't have almost 
Okay, so yeah, they can make all their little spirit bows. They can make whatever weapons they want out of it. Um, but yeah, they, they don't have any more crazy powers. Like, Kang Du's Wolverine Claws didn't have anything special. They were just Wolverine Claws. I mean, he could combine them with his powers to, like, you make that giant, like, snake bite fist thing. But nothing crazy powerful with that. Uh, beyond that, though, they all have their individual abilities, their scriffs. And I made a video about that. So if you want to go check that out here of what they can all do individually with their powers, um, go check that video out. But anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Teching signing out, and uh, we wait. We wait. That's what Bleach fans do. We wait. You don't know, Barry. You weren't even alive when Bleach was around. It was a marvelous time, Barry. It was the halcyon days of my youth. Hopefully, you'll be able to share it with me in the new era, my good friend.